Hello everyone, um, this is going to be a video on my channel explaining what the Bible really says and what the true gospel is here at my college dorm, so I'm trying to be quiet, um, but there are, the Bible says that there are a lot of doctrines of demons in this time and There is a lot of deception, so I did want to make a video explaining what the Bible really says. Um, so, the first thing you need to understand is that the Bible teaches that God created everything out of love, and that it is by love that all morals and laws exist, but God originally only created the world with one rule, and that rule was that Adam and Eve could not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now, a lot of people I feel like don't really understand this, but the way I understand it is, is you know, in a way our lives are kind of worse now that we do have to worry about following rules we have we know right from wrong and instinctively we want to do wrong um but with adam and eve it was actually the exact opposite they didn't know right from wrong because they had not eaten from the fruit of the knowledge of freedom, of good and evil so they didn't have that knowledge but in, nevertheless instinctively they still were good because God called them good and you see that in the Bible but now that they ate the fruit of the tree of the fruit of knowledge and good and evil it's now the exact opposite we know instinctively right from wrong but yet we choose to do wrong and because of that we are all sinners and even if you think you're not a sinner, even if you think you've never done something wrong in your life, the Bible makes it clear. If you read, I believe, Matthew chapter 7 or Matthew chapter 5, one of the two, it will tell you that even if you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Even if you hate someone, you have committed murder in your heart. So God's standard is perfection, and you can't enter heaven without any form of evil in your life the bible says that the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is everlasting life through christ our lord um, so you, you need to realize that we are all sinners. We are all separated from the grace of God. And we all deserve hell. But through God's grace, he fixed the curse of Adam and Eve. And that's why in Romans, Jesus is called the last Adam. Because he undid that curse. by paying the debt for sin, which is death. And then he rose again to defeat the power of death, which was the curse for eating the tree of food, knowledge and good and evil. If you read the book of Genesis, God said that the day they would eat it, they would die. And although they didn't die physically, they died spiritually. That's how, how I heard at least one pastor explain it. Um, although they didn't really die, they um, you know, it's in the same way that we die, our old self dies and we become a new self and we become born again, the opposite happened to Adam and Eve because they were made good, they were made holy, but that holy and good person died and then they became a corrupt person. Um, so really what happened to Adam and Eve was the opposite, exact opposite of what happens when we are born again. So Jesus died and rose again so that we, 
spiritually can do the same thing. We put our faith in him and our trust in him. And the same spirit that raises up Christ from the dead will raise up us up from the dead and give us everlasting life. That same spirit is the Holy Ghost. You need to call out to the Holy Ghost and ask him to fill you. But first you must repent of your sins because you need to acknowledge that you are a sinner before God. And although Jesus Christ died for everyone, if you just ignore his sacrifice, then it would not be just for him to forgive you. So you need to first acknowledge your sins and regret them and accept his sacrifice and declare. And you do that by declaring that he is Lord and by living for him in every area of your life. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, he will make you just like how he intended humans to be, which is free from sin. When you're truly born again, you don't just continue in sin, even if you repent of it, even if you're constantly singing, but repenting, that's still not good enough by God's standards because that's not how he created Adam and Eve. And I'm not saying that if you are in that state that, um, that you're not, that your heart isn't right or that um, you just, you're following the prosperity gospel. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying you're not truly born again yet. I'm not even saying that you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost or you haven't truly been, uh, made a new person, but you, there's still at least some of your flesh or some of your old person has not yet been put to death. So... And the only way that you can fight this is you just need to, sometimes it takes persistence, I feel. Um, but you really need to have faith too. Um, and just and pray and fast until you are truly free from sin. Because the Bible makes it clear that it's possible. There's a verse somewhere in First John that says, He that is born, again, born of God does not sin. He cannot, for the seed of God remains in him. Um, you need to these those promises. Also, an important note, the Bible does say that you need to be water baptized as well as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Um, it says that in John 3, 5, he, unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it makes it very clear you need to be born of water because that is a physical sign that you have died and rose again as a new person. Um, so I didn't want to make this video too long, I just wanted to make this quick video explaining the gospel so you know what the Bible really teaches, how you can be saved. There's no specific prayer that you can pray, just pray out of your own heart if you do truly want to be saved. Um, so that's about it and God bless you.